you know, when you were, when you were labeled as a, as a whistleblower, you know, for the Baltimore police and all this kind of stuff. And I remember you talking about systematic issues and all this kind of thing. What, what has happened, what's transpired in, in the past four years certainly doesn't sound like anything you would have forced. No, I mean, you just said it. We were talking about systemic issues, institutional yeah. issues. These are things that are the echoes of policy and time and legacy. Now we went from being the system of policing has racist outcomes, which it does, mm-hmm. to the cops themselves are racist. And that is simply not true. And it's rather irrelevant that the cop is racist. Give me a whole police department of racists. If they don't do racist shit, I don't care. Yeah. This is my thing that I'm talking about. One thing that I've realized is, is that these unequal outcomes where we talk about, so police respond to violence, to sum it up quickly, uh, a lot of violence is committed by a small minority of black males. Black people live around black people. So police respond to violence. They're paid to catch crimes. So they're looking for violence like murder and shootings. When they don't see any, they see a jaywalker. They see a drug dealer. Drugs are tied to, to violence and, and the theory. So you lock, you lock up and you, you take enforcement measures against the people you are around. So innocent black people who are nonviolent essentially get double victimized because cops are looking for violent black men who are very likely to victimize those individuals as well. And then in the police pursuit of those violent black males, they catch up all of the other innocent uh, nonviolent black people in those neighborhoods. Mm. Uh, that is the basic explanation of why uh, policing is systemically biased. It has absolutely nothing to do with why, with, with a cop being racist or not racist. What I was doing had a racist outcome. I had zero racial intent. I don't give a shit who you are. White, black, brown, indifferent. My job is to put your ass in jail, and I didn't care who you were. You were a stat to me. There's no white stat, no black stat, no, <laughs> nothing. You're a stat. You're going to prison, and I look good for it. <laughs> I, I didn't care about that, but... I ended like 85, 90% of my arrests are black males. Mm. And they're not all for murder. You know, there's only a handful for actual serious offenses like that. The rest are are drug dealing and uh, carrying a gun, which you could say, well, carrying a gun is an issue. Yeah, but when you're a drug dealer, not carrying a gun or having a gun near you is a pretty risky ass thing to do. Mm. Uh, uh, drug dealers are hunted by the police hunted by people who rob drug dealers and hunted by other drug dealers. And the drug users are ready to rip them off in a heartbeat as well. It's a very dangerous job. Uh, so I understand why they have guns and stuff on them. I, I get all this, this cycle. But I'm not racist, and neither are the cops around me, regardless of the outcomes. So we... I bitched about this a lot in the past. When you focus on individuals, it's like standing in front of a forest and you're just focusing on the trees Mm -hmm. and you're totally missing the big picture. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the content, uh, you are more than welcome to click the link in the description below. That will take you right to a free webinar where I will be taking you exactly through how to design a framework for your life and create that mission that will bring about a sense of intrinsic value to you. Go for it.